I think there have been two types of uh, important developments in the treatment of PD recently. One concerns the delivery or the optimization of delivery of drugs we've been using for a long time, notably levodopa and at this meeting for example there are a number of interesting new data of novel formulations and novel routes of delivery of levodopa including intrapulmonary inhalers for example or the development of a new subcutaneous formulation to deliver, be delivered continuously by pumps. So these are interesting developments with old drugs and I think the most exciting second type of development we've seen is the launch of trials that are actually disease modifying trials aiming to target synuclein aggregation and cell to cell transmission and at this meeting there is going to be a poster for example on the phase two results of one of those antibody trials against synuclein another one is ongoing so these are also very interesting developments that will hopefully lead to disease-modifying approaches in the future. Well, there are many of those, of course, as always, and I think uh, maybe one of the most pressing historically and continuously up to now is really how to um, slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. We can do quite a bit regarding its symptoms, both motor and a little less, but still non-motor but we can't really do anything to slow down progression or even stop it and that is certainly one of the most pressing needs and that is coupled with with a diagnostic need because in order to we believe to be successful with disease modification we ought to come in as early as possible and we ought to be able to diagnose Parkinson's disease as early as possible and there have been interesting data again shown today in one of the plenaries concerning REM sleep behavior disorder is one of the prodromal conditions to Parkinson's disease. Dr. Postuma presented the largest ever series of such cases from a collaborative effort of about 1,200 um, RBD patients and followed their progression into disease, mainly Parkinson's disease or um, dementia with Lewy bodies and um, identified the risk factors that would be most predictive of conversion and how that could be the basis of disease modifying trials in with relatively small numbers of subjects. So that these are very um, interesting new developments addressing this need. I think the most promising is, is indeed, as I mentioned, the identification of uh, prodromal disease stages, also using biomarkers. Um, and we're seeing new approaches using genomic assessments to identify PD risk signatures uh, that will help together with clinical and other risk markers imaging for example to narrow down at risk populations for Parkinson's disease and thus serving the need or addressing the need to be as early as possible with diagnosis. As I said, there were interesting contributions in relation to RBD and prodromal, to new ways of drug delivery. Um, there's also the exciting new finding in uh, Huntington's disease that is presented here, kind of with Huntington lowering approaches using antisense oligonucleotides. We've been presented yesterday in one of the sessions with, the, with a validation study of the new MDS diagnostic criteria for Parkinson's disease. Uh, these are some of the examples that I found very interesting at the meeting.